Do you wonder why men always seem to want you the most after you've left them? Why is it that when you finally take a step back, all of a sudden they realize how much they want you? We'll discuss five interesting concepts that will help you understand why men need absence to know you're the one and how you can use it to get any man to fall in love with you. Let's imagine I am a soldier and me and you are in a relationship. Let's say up until this point in the span of me being a soldier, I have never actually deployed because let's just say we've never gone to war for whatever reason. In the span since I've been a soldier, we've been married for let's say five years. Our marriage has been going decently well, but you're noticing that as time has gone on, we're kind of getting to this point where I'm not as romantic with you. I don't seem as interested in you. I don't really seem as physically intimate or interested in you. The, you feel the coldness and you feel the distance beginning to separate us in the relationship, okay? Let's say all of a sudden I get deployed for the first time because we're having a war. It's like a crisis, right? And I have to get deployed. And now that I'm getting deployed, let's just say for the sake of example, I'm going to be deployed for eight months up until a year, maybe even longer if things don't go well. And I go and I get deployed and let's say, you know, now I'm at war, I'm deployed, I'm overseas and I'm not spending any more time with you. I'm not able to see you. I'm not really able to contact you because of the circumstances. And the only way for me to get a message to you, let's just say hypothetically, is by sending you a letter. Let's say it's three months now, it's four months now, five months. And as time is going on and I'm writing you these letters, you're noticing that I'm becoming, I'm sounding a lot like a love poet in these letters. And I'm sounding a lot more romantic than you've ever known me to be. I'm telling you how I love you so much and I can't wait to see you again and how much, how amazing you are. I'm talking about the color of your eyes and how I miss it when your eye usually twitches, when you laugh so hard at my jokes. And I'm telling you all the things I want to do to you when I finally uh, see you again in this next uh, eight months and how stressful it's been and how horrible it's been to be without you for all this time. And I'm writing all of this amazing stuff in my letters to you and you feel like it's amazing and you love it and you appreciate it but you're kind of wondering to yourself huh i kind of wonder why you never expressed any of these things that you're feeling or any of these thoughts that you've been having to me when we were together because all of this stuff that you're writing in, inside these letters is amazing but i've never heard them come from you in the span of our five-year marriage and then let's say for the sake of example i come back after a year of being deployed in this war right and i come back and i embrace you with the biggest hug i've ever embraced you and i kiss you all over your face and we i i tell you how amazing you are and i tell you all these affirming words and and i'm so much more romantic with you after i come back from deployment than i ever was when i was spending these five years of marriage with you okay so we're gonna dive deep into each of these after i gave you the love poet example so you can encapsulate it under uh, underneath a story right so first we have imagination let's imagine you are going to two separate movies and they're both horror movies let's just say for the sake of example and at both movies, you go to them and you watch them at the same time and you're good trying to see which one is better. In one of these horror movies, they reveal the monster right away at the very beginning in the first image and you see him in the sunshine midday with a clear sky and it's right there. You can see its whole body and everything just sitting there. In the second movie, they don't show the monster for basically the entire film right up until the end and even when you do see the monster you only see little glimpses of it you only hear noises of it you only see it creeping and crawling and doing weird stuff and it's only up until the very end that the monster gets revealed now i want to ask you which horror movie do you think would be more terrifying the horror movie where you see the monster at the very beginning in the first image of the movie standing in broad daylight or the horror movie where you barely see glimpses of the monster, but you know it's there, you can hear it, you can feel it, it's attacking the characters, it's going crazy, right? But you just can't quite see it 
and understand it fully. It's more likely that the second movie is going to be more terrifying, more scary than the first movie where you see the monster right at the beginning and you see him in broad daylight, okay? Or her, whatever the monster, or it, whatever the monster is, right? Now, the reason for that and the reason I bring that up is because what's actually happening is something very interesting with the human mind, right? Our imagination is the most powerful tool that we don't even realize how it affects our perception of things. And the reason I use that example is because I want you to see how your imagination can drastically change your perception of a situation, of a person, of a place, of a thing, of an anything. And the same thing applies to men and why when you're absent from them, all of a sudden now they come to this realization and we'll get to realization in a little bit but they come to this realization that oh my god they have to be with you oh my god you're the best thing since sliced bread oh my god you're so beautiful you're so stunning you're so you're the one that he wants to be with their imagination is allowed to run wild it's hard to imagine what someone is like right or imagine what it felt like to be with someone when they're actually sitting with you right then and there i know for some of you you're probably like well how am i going to get him uh, get his imagination running wild if I'm hanging out with him all the time or if I'm supposed to be dating this person or if I'm supposed to be building a relationship with this person. Here's the key. That means stay off of the dating apps. Stay off of the being a textaholic. Stay off of the Snapchats. Get rid of your Snapchat streaks. You don't need to be Snapchatting any guy that you're trying to build a relationship with. Why? Because all of those forms of communication are low, what I call low quality forms of communication and when you're communicating to him in those low quality forms what's he's gonna feel like he's gonna feel like you're still around he's gonna feel like you're still present he's gonna feel like he's still speaking to you and you've never left his life that's the problem is that for a lot of you you're never actually absent to that guy that his imagination can begin running wild. And number three, let's talk about contrast. In the process of him imagining you and imagining what it's like to spend time with you and imagining what it felt like to be around you, that is the time where he actually has the space to contrast what it was like to be with you versus what it was like to not be with you. In the example that I gave you guys of the soldier at war who's writing you all of these love poems, the only reason he's able to properly see clearly all of the aspects of you and the relationship and your personality and your looks and your traits that he finds so amazing is because now when he's at war, he can actually contrast the fact that you were so amazing, you treated him so well, how, how good it felt to be around you with how horrible it feels to be away from you, how horrible it feels to be at war, how horrible it feels to not see be able to see your beautiful face and your beautiful smile and your beautiful eyes and all that good stuff. The contrast is also what is playing a role in why your absence will actually stimulate him into desiring you more and realizing that you're the one for him. That contrast allows him to see what his life is like without you in it. And that's a good thing because if you're bringing a lot of value and good things into the relationship and you're feeling like, oh, well, he doesn't see that or he doesn't notice that, that contrast is the perfect way for him to actually realize that. Why do you think when you break up with these guys, all of a sudden, when you guys break up, now he can tell you about all the amazing things you did for him and how much he wants to be with you and how in love with you he is and how much he wants to fix things. Because after having you in his life, he's able to contrast that experience with not having you in his life. And then the men come to their own realization. Like I said, we'll talk about realization in a bit. The men come to their realization that, oh, my life was so much better with her in it than it was without her. If you're there 24-7, 365, all the time, never gets a break from you. As soon as he leaves your site, right, he's texting you 24-7, Snapchatting you. He, you. It's like some of you got the three apps going on at once. You got the, you got the Snapchat, 
right? Or, or for some of you, it might be WhatsApp. You got the text going on and then you got the Instagram DM to send each other memes. Or maybe for some of you who are on TikTok, maybe you send your man memes on TikTok, memes and funny videos on TikTok. So it's like you're talking in like two to three different places all the time, 24 seven. And imagine what that does to his psyche when he's never able to get a break from you. Not that you're a bad person or that he doesn't want to spend time with you or he doesn't want to be around you, but imagine what that does for your absence. How can he possibly contrast what it's like to not talk to you, not speak to you, not be around you, not spend time with you if every single minute of the day he's speaking to you, talking to you, or spending time with you in a low quality form? Number four, let's discuss appreciation. Let's say you were waking up in the morning and you're so mad because in the morning you got woken up by the garbage trucks going by and the garbage trucks are going by and you're like, oh my God, why did the garbage men have to come so early? They're waking me up out of my sleep. Don't they know people have stuff to do? Let's say they're banging around, they're loud out there and it just wakes you up. Like, can't they be quiet out there? Oh, look at those silly garbage men. And you're looking at them and you're so you're scoffing. You're like, look at those garbage men. They probably wasted their lives away. Didn't go to school, didn't make anything of themselves. So now they're picking up garbage and you, and you yell at them. You're like, hey, be quiet out there. You're waking up my kids. You're waking up my, my, my me out of my sleep. I, I don't have time for this. Can you guys turn it down out there? Now, let's imagine a scenario that for whatever reason, you actually had to spend a day being a garbage man. So you had to go through the process of being a garbage man where you had to wake up whenever the garbage men wake up. You had to do all the routes. You had to get dirty. You had to smell all that nasty trash. You had to see a whole bunch of nasty stuff. You had to go through walking all around, driving the truck, doing all the stuff that the garbage men have to do and all the all the BS that the garbage men have to deal with. Well, what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen after you spend a whole day with the garbage men? Is your appreciation for what the garbage men have to go through in order to do their job is going to grow and you're going to begin to appreciate everything that goes into the process of just putting your garbage out and how it just gets scooped up and taken to a magical place that you don't have to deal with it, right? Because now, not only will you know what the garbage men have to go through, but you'll know the process, you'll know how much work it takes, you'll know where it goes, you'll know the landfill, you'll know how it smells, you'll know all the stuff they have to deal with when they get there, you'll know with all the politics, all the drama, all the back and forth, all the, all the stresses that they go through. And because you have a much better understanding of what they're going through, your appreciation for that job changes. And then what's, what do you think is going to happen for the rest of your life every time you get woken up by that garbage truck? It's going to be less annoying and, and less of an inconvenience to you because you know everything that went into them just being able to show up at your house and pick up your garbage and leave. And it's not going to bother you as much. And so the reason I give you the example, uh, that example of the garbage man and appreciation is because I want you to understand how a change in your perspective can drastically change how much or how little you appreciate someone or something for who they are. And in this case, when it comes to your absence and stepping away from someone, taking a step back from this guy, it can drastically change his perspective on what it's like to be in a relationship with you or be talking to you or be around you because he now has the experience of not being with you, not being around you. And as soon as, as he stops being able to spend time around you, talk to you 24 seven, see you 24 seven, text you 24 seven. Now, all of a sudden his appreciation for the time he does get to spend with you can actually increase and grow. It's hard to appreciate all the time you spend with someone when you never are able to not spend time with them. Do you understand how that works, right? Your appreciation and even your anticipation for spending time with someone can only grow and increase if you're not spending time with them. This is why it's so important that you don't overdo it 
when it comes to especially when you're in the beginning stages of dating a guy that you don't overdo it that because you like a guy or you're interested in this guy that you get all giddy and excited and you want to sleep over six days a week my advice to you would be to for the first uh three four five months do not be doing no damn sleepovers continue presenting yourself in these high quality forms where he gets to come and you know anticipate seeing you be around you spend some time with you and he has to go back home and think about the next time he's going to see you a lot of you sometimes are jumping into uh right right into oh i like you now okay we'll sleep over okay two days turns to three days turns to four days turns to five right and now you're sleeping over all the time and it's like being in a marriage but he hasn't been able to properly go through the process of appreciating you and missing you and contrasting what it's like to be with you versus what it's like to not be with you that he can can actually grow his desire for you over time and then leading up to the point where you do got where you guys do spend every day together or you guys do live together where he can already be of the mindset that I love being around you because I appreciate it so much more than not being around you. You understand what I'm saying? When you jump right into it right at the beginning, you never give him that off period, that absence to appreciate the fact that you being around is amazing. He loves it. He enjoys it. And when you're not around, he's really sad or unhappy or frustrated. And it's just not as wonderful as you being there. And number five, the realization when he actually has that absence from you, he can know for a fact everything he's feeling and thinking is genuine to him. And when he understands that all his thoughts and emotions and feelings are genuine to him, he knows that anything I do from this point on or any action I take that stems from this realization that I desire her and I want her is genuine to me and that's what I want. And when it comes to that realization, the re the next logical step after that realization happens is I must take action on my realization, which is why they come back with a totally different approach than they had when they originally were with you. He can now be sure that the next course of action is to pursue you or try to get you or approach you or, you know, you know what I mean? Get you um, into his life, whatever that may be.